Hello dear friends, my name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. I am clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Today we are to talking about a very important topic. These are phytoestrogens. These are mm, female hormones like structures in their um, natural, in their different plants. Why is it so important? Mm, because from one side, uh, when we consume this uh, um, food, uh, we can get these phytoestrogens that are weak estrogens. They may have the um, activity like our female hormones, meaning mm, probably they can cause, uh, for example, stimulation of breasts or uterus, and uh, if there is stimulation, they can be mm, possibly cancer, theoretically, and from the other side, it can help uh, when the hormones or female hormones are uh, low, when uh, the woman is in menopause, for example, and she has all these symptoms like hot flashes, like osteoporosis, like fatigue, uh, irritability, moodiness, uh, night sweats, uh, it may actually help with those symptoms. So, today I'd like to talk uh, with you about uh, why is it so important to kill cancer stem cells and uh, how do phytoestrogens affect cancer. How, uh, what human studies do we have? What foods contain phytoestrogens? And does uh, do actually phytoestrogens cause breast cancer or they help to fight it? So let's get started. Previously, we thought that all the cancers um, are produced from one single cell that has mutation and then it grows and it uh, divides and um, it produces the cancer. But lately there, is, there are more and more clinical data evolving that uh, all the tumors are uh, from uh, the small, small um, amount of stem cells residing in tumor or somewhere else, in, for example bone marrow, uh, that will produce and give growth to the tube. These cells are very resistant to, resistant to all our treatments, to chemotherapy, to radiation therapy. It's really tough, it's difficult to kill them. And when we do our usual therapy, we kill all the tumor, but then these cells that are very resistant, very viable, they are remaining. And after some several years, for example, 10 years sometimes, uh, when uh, the woman gets stress or some uh, maybe uh, serious uh, infection, uh, this will reactivate and they will make new tumors. And they are the reason of um, drug resistance, they are the reason of metastasis. That's why we need to seek for some other therapy that will be aimed on these stem cells. And uh, before there are some um, studies that show that, for example, um, selenomycin can uh, kill uh, stem cells, uh, also curcumin or pepperin or um, green tea can aim their stem cells. And uh, now there is a data that shows that phytoestrogens also can aim uh, the cancer stem cells. And we know that they are dependent on many pathways. These are different molecules, receptors, are different proteins that will make them very resistant, self-dividing, uh, dividing all the time, metastasizing, etc. And uh, these are all the names of different pathways that we are trying to aim in these uh, tumors. And here you can see, these are types of phytoestrogens. You can see flavonoids, tilbanes, uh, lignans, and these are different substances, phytoestrogens, and what pathways they actually uh, can affect. And these pathways are very important for survival of uh, stem cells, cancer stem cells. Okay, this is all theoretical and uh, they really show a lot of promising results. That's why um, there are a lot of human studies nowadays uh, checking is it really, will they really help in humans, in patients. First study, they just uh, took patients with breast cancer and just asked are you taking any phytoestrogens? Are you taking any supplements? And um, they put all together, mixed everything, and okay, uh, came to the conclusion that no, they don't help uh, if you take uh, phytoestrogens before 
your cancer treatment, it won't really help. But it's not really good um, study because how can you mix everything together? Because they are all different, different doses, different phytoestrogens, different people, different duration. That's why the cancers are different. So let's go to the next one. Red clover, this beautiful red clover. Uh, also, there were patients without uh, breast cancer, but with a close relative with breast cancer, uh, meaning they are in at increased risk. They were in taking this supplement for three years and they saw no significant changes in breast density, uh, endometrial sickness like uterine, uh, no uterine effect, no breast effect. But in reality, we cannot say that because this is only one indicator, only one feature. But really, there are hundreds of thousands things that it may affect or we, they did not check or we don't even know that they are uh, very important. That's why it's better to see if it will affect uh, the more um, global things like, for example, uh, the risk of uh, recurrency, relapse of the disease, risk of metastasis, how these patients will survive. It's much more important, but it's um, quite expensive. That's why they didn't check it. Next, flaxseed, flaxseed, linseed. It's a very interesting natural source of phytoestrogens. By the way, I have a different, uh, a separate video about flaxseed in breast cancer, not only in hormonal sensitive cancer. By the way, um, there are cancers, breast cancers can be hormonal sensitive with receptors to estrogen or hormonal resistant. But before we thought that there are only um, internal receptors, there are nuclear receptors which will be affected by estrogens. But now we know that there are uh, receptors on the membrane, on the surface, and they will behave differently. And these phytoestrogens can activate them. And in, when in, even in triple negative cancer, where there is no receptors, nu no nuclear receptors, they can be still the membranous receptors. And that's why phytoestrogens work even in triple negative cancer. That is very important. Here, the scientists, they just checked key 67. This is the index of how fast the uh, tumor cells are dividing, how, how fast the tumor is growing. This is a good index. Like the faster it's growing, the more aggressive tumor will be, the faster it will grow, the faster it will metastasize. But in reality, so many cases when this key 67 is only 2%, for example, very small, but the tumor is growing like crazy or it's very high and we treat the person and she has no disease and she lives 10 years and nothing. That's why this is only one feature. As I want to repeat, this is only one feature. You cannot say, oh, it uh, doesn't change key 67. That's why it's not working. It's not true. Next one, flaxseed with aromatase inhibitor. Aromatase inhibitor and astrazole, they checked. This is the very common drug for hormonal therapy. It will block the action of estrogens to the tumor, so it won't be stimulated. And here we know that there is no interaction between them, and if the person is taking an astrozole or other aromatase inhibitor, mostly flaxseed intake will be safe for her. And here we see also the patients. We see the good uh, decrease in key 67 when the flaxseed is used, and increased apoptosis in cancer patients if they take flaxseed. That's why you see the um, discrepancy of data. Also, s equiol other phytoestrogens, very interesting. Uh, it's produced by gut bacteria when the patients take soy products and it's active. Uh, it was tested in triple negative cancer, not hormonal sensitive, and it showed that it can decrease their key 67. Good? Yes, but not the only indicator. I want to mention that this s equal is um, produced only in 30% of people, because only 30% of people have special bacteria in their gut to produce it. And those people may react differently to estrogens, to phytoestrogen, from other people who don't produce it. If you want to know if it's produced or not in your body, um, they checked the urine. If it's produced, it will be absorbed in the gut and excreted in urine. So these levels will be high in urine of these patients. Next, these are different 
soy products, soy foods, so soy supplements. For example, here soy milk. They found out that soy phytoestrogens are accumulated in high concentrations in breasts, meaning it will most likely work there. So they are absorbed quite well, and these are good news. Here it did not uh, did not decrease any density of breasts, but also it's only one indicator, and uh, we are more interested in the future of these patients, not just one indicator. Is the density increasing or not increasing? But because monitoring patients, many patients for many years, it's very expensive. That's why they use just this marker. Here, it can, so it can normalize upper blood pressure systolic, it can decrease diastolic blood pressure and can decrease bone, bone mineral density. What? Estrogens might protect the bones from osteoporosis. Here it decreases. It decreases only if the calcium is low. If the calcium is normal or high, it will protect bones. It will heal osteoporosis. Why is it such a big discrepancy of many studies? Because different types of phytoestrogen, different quality, different people, different doses, different duration of intake. Some produce SQL, the others don't. Different genetics, different types of cancer. And many other factors, maybe. That's why it's very important to understand, do phytoestrogens really affect breast cancer stem cells or not? Or it's just theory that is not uh, proved in the humans. Um, we can indirectly measure it. Uh, for example, we treat the patients, they are free from disease, then we give phytoestrogens and see. For example, the woman is taking phytoestrogens and uh, mm, in five years mm, she has 70% of chance of being free of any disease. And if she's not taking phytoestrogens, there is only, for example, 50% of being free and 50% of having recurrency, relapse. That is the indirect indication. That means, okay, most likely if her recurrency risk is decreased, that means most likely uh, phytoestrogens are affecting somehow that breast cancer stem cells. And look here, entrolactone is produced by flora from lignans of rye, wheat, rice, the outer layers. Mm, the layers that are usually thrown out and during processes and processing and then you eat uh, mm, yummy white rice. The most uh, valuable things are just removed. Then flax seeds. Flax seeds is again very good product for breast cancer, in my opinion. Then nuts, fruits and vegetables. And here you can see degrees of K67, uh, then entrolactone, very important, that is what I'm talking about, uh, decreases the risk of relapse and improves five year survival of these patients. That is already can give us some hints about the maybe it acts on breast cancer stem cells. Several articles and meta analysis for you. Meta analysis is the highest level of statistical analysis where they take many um, clinical trials and they uh, threw out the trials that can have a lot of errors, biases, uh, that can um, that don't have placebo, that have small groups, that are not good quality, and they just compare only those that are good quality. And they come to conclusion, they combine them. And they can see that consumption of flaxseed decreases the risk of breast cancer. Next, teenagers, if they're taking Phytoestrogens, it will decrease the risk of breast cancer in future. Meta-analysis. Lignans help to decrease uh, breast cancer risk in postmenopausal women. And next one. Very interesting. Chinese uh, investigation. And they came to the conclusion that high amount of soy intake might provide reasonable benefits uh, for the prevention of breast cancer. And what is interesting, every 10 milligrams of isoflavones of soy a day decreases the risk by 3%. For example, according to Chinese guidelines, the recommended daily amount of soy food is 15 to 25 grams that will come of soybean uh, or equivalents that contains 10 to 50 milligrams of isoflavones of phytoestrogens. 15 25 grams contain 10 to 50 milligrams of active substance. And these 10 to 50 milligrams a day decrease the risk by 3 to 15 percent. 
in both pre- and post-menopausal women. The other one, the FRESH 2022, also the same results, consumption of soybean decreases the risk of breast cancer. Eight investigations, they separated all the, all the women to, into two groups. One group is taking less than 15 mg of phytoestrogens a day, the other is taking more than 15 mg of phytoestrogens a day. If they took, for example, 1000 of patients with breast cancer, that is important. From this 1000, 750, three fourths, will take low amounts of soy, less than 15 mg of isoflavones. And only 25% of women are taking normal amounts. Which food contains phytoestrogen? Mostly, you should uh, understand that it's flaxseed, tofu, sesame seeds, soybeans, black beans, dried food, and all the others uh, have lesser amounts. And which food decreases uh, normal, uh, usual estrogens that will uh, lead to increased risk? This is cruciferous, broccoli sprouts, green tea, sauerkraut, sauerkraut and, lemon, uh, and um, fiber. So, in my opinion, this is not the universal laws, it's not uh, um, official recommendations, it's my opinion that it's preferable to get phytoestrogen, not from supplements, but from food. Effect may take some time, so you need to take it for a long time. The use of soy products and flaxseed and all the other sources of phytoestrogen, they decrease the risk in all the teens, in, uh, in reproductive age women, in uh, menopause. Phytoestrogen may be used in adolescents, then you should consider uh, the consumption of at least 15 to 20 grams of soy or equivalents per day to decrease the risks of breast cancer. And in menopausal women uh, who, or who have low uh, levels of estrogens, phytoestrogen may also help with the symptoms of uh, low estrogens. What are the symptoms? Hot flushes, uh, osteoporosis, night sweats, moodiness, low concentrations, dryness of vagina, painful intercourse, etc. This is flaxseed. As for me, this is a very interesting uh, adjunctive remedy for breast cancer patients or for women just in menopause or in premenopausal women. For example, it has lignins that will you know, combine with estrogens in gut and don't let them are reabsorbed back, so it will decrease the uh, levels of estrogen in woman and give its own phytoestrogens to replace uh, the usual estrogens. It has some adverse reactions like allergic reactions, diarrhea, bloating, you know, because it's an oily product. Also, there are some relative contraindications like pregnancy or breastfeeding, because we just don't know uh, whether it affects the baby or not, is it mm, dangerous or is it safe. Just that's why I put it here. Then it can cause some blood thinning. That's why not, better not to take it before surgeries or with blood thinning drugs. Dear friends, uh, I hope you are not tired of all this information. I was doing my best to prepare very informative lecture for you. I hope I could uh, prove my opinion here. I wish you good luck. I wish you strong health. God bless you. See you in the next videos. Bye-bye.